Here are three ways of power transmission in mechanical industry. First one is belt drives. Connecting one pulley to another pulley through belt, but it causes slippage problem. Belt slips on pulley and cannot be power transferred 100%. That's why the second way of power transmission is gear system. The biggest advantage of this is that slippage is zero. Now if slippage is zero, you can guess from the input how the output will be. So the gear system has developed so much that today multiple types of gear systems are available in the market. Now before understanding all this, we have to understand the basic terminology of gears and after this, you can also prepare your own project. The gear you are seeing has a lot of teeth on it. When one gear comes in contact with the other, it transfers power from these teeth. So whenever two gears are meshed, the primary condition is that their teeth size should be equal. Otherwise, there can be slippage, noise and the gear will not be meshed properly. Let's assume that this big gear has 48 teeth and this small gear has 16 teeth. Now if we want to find the gear ratio, we will do 48 by 16 which will give us 3 is to 1 gear ratio. Now let's understand gear ratio in simple language. If we power a big gear with a motor or an engine, then big gear will rotate 360 degrees once and small gear will rotate 3 times. Now this will have a huge advantage. If the speed is low, we can increase the speed by increasing the gear ratio. But there is a drawback. Torque is equal to power upon omega. Here omega is speed. Now the speed will increase with the gear ratio but the torque will be low. That's why you will always see in cars that the speed of the car is high in the fifth gear but the torque is low. If you try to drive in the fifth gear in the rest position, the car will not be able to generate enough torque to move the car. Because a big gear is rotating a small gear. If we reverse this and give power to the small gear, then when the small gear rotates three times, then the big gear will rotate once. That means the speed is decreasing in the output. So here the torque will increase. So if heavy loading is required, then we have to set the gear ratio like this. We get one more big advantage that we can change the rotation. This gear is rotating clockwise and the other one is anti-clockwise. The gear you are seeing is called a spur gear. It is not used for high speed application because it produces a lot of noise at high speed. When the gear teeth come in contact with the other gear teeth, the whole gear teeth comes in contact with each other, which causes noise. You will understand this better later. So, to solve this problem, a helical gear was made. The teeth of this gear are slightly turned at an angle, which prevents the teeth of the gear from coming in contact with the other gear. First, one point of the teeth comes in contact, and when the next point comes in contact, the first point must have left it. If we come home late, then no one should hear the sound of our feet. So, first we touch some portion of the surface of the foot. After that, we touch the whole foot with the surface so that no one hears the sound of the feet. This is exactly what happens in helical gear. So, here the speed of the gear increased and the gear became silent. That's why the helical gear is used in the gearbox of vehicles. It is also used in heavy loading machinery. To increase the speed further, we need a double helical gear, which is also called a herringbone gear, or helical gear, which is also called a herringbone gear. These are similar to helical but double. These gears smoothly and silently transfer power. At one time, there are two teeth mesh, so these gears are used in the gearbox of vehicles. In addition, submarines and steam turbines rotate at a very high speed and are also used in sports cars. All the gears we have seen so far, all transfer power in parallel. That is, the shafts of the gears should be parallel to each other. So when power is to be transferred at any angle, the bevel gear is used. This gearbox is called differential gearbox. We will discuss its working in detail in another video. Because it is a little complicated and also a little expensive. But it is a very useful gearbox. It is a very complicated gearbox and it will need separate time to explain. After this comes the worm gear which is very important. Worm in Hindi means kita. So it looks like a worm and rotates the gear. This gear also transmits power at 90 degrees but there is something special about it. 
First of all, this gear reduces the speed a lot. The gear ratio can be 300 into 1B which means when Worm completes 300 rounds, it will complete one round. The biggest advantage of this is that when the speed is reduced so much, we get a lot of heavy torque. One of their benefits is that only Worm can rotate the wheel, the wheel cannot rotate Worm again. They have one-way power transfer. That's why they use elevators where heavy loads are loaded. Also, steering wheel in cars is used to make the car steering smooth. Next comes the rack and pinion gear. The one rotating in this is called pinion and the one moving left and right is called rack. This gearbox changes rotational motion to linear motion. The biggest example of this is that in the mechanical steering of vehicles, we move the steering in a rotation but with the help of the gear, the tires move left and right. Many times we face a situation where the distance between two gears is more and we need the rotation of both gears in the same direction. So for this we use an idler gear in between which will connect both gears and will make the rotational axis. But if the distance between the gears is too much, then we use the third method of power transmission in which the chain system is used between the gears. And the gears here are called sprocket gears. Now, the most important gear is called the internal gear. All the gears we have seen so far had teeth on the outside of the sub, but this gear has teeth on the inside. And the planetary gear system is the part of this-